What's up fellow gamers, Freak here. This video is gonna be about two hours long, give or take an hour, because we've reviewed about 78 cards so far, and there's another like 60-ish, and our total runtime has been close to like three something hours, so that's the vague math here. They have finally released the rest of the cards of set two Legends of Runeterra, and it's gonna be fun. All right, so let's get into the champion reveal that came out, and that is Misfortune. Misfortune exists when allies attack, deal one to the battling enemies and the enemy nexus. She is a three mana three three. Now this is pretty cool. So she, you know, first first glance is oh she's a little bit like a Nivea, right? She um, when there's an attack, she hits all the enemies. Well, she doesn't hit defending enemies. So if they want to keep Heimer turrets on the bench, or um, you get a bunch of spell power, or gangplank barrels, or whatever, um, they can they can keep the backline safe and have them dodge the damage. Um, now it's still going to deal one to the blocker, so you can throw a 1-1 one, one at her, or at someone else, it dies the attack whiffs, uh, so you might need Overwhelm in some cases for these to work well, but it is a 3 mana 3 3 which is, you know, an automatic 4, uh, but in realistic terms, also deals some damage on attacks, which makes it at least a 6, um, right, like, at minimum it's a 3 mana 4 3, which would only still be a 4 or a 5, but, um, in realistic terms, uh, does more than that because you're going to do one to any other blocker. She doesn't have to attack to deal one damage. So, like, if this was a blank card that didn't have level up text and it just said three mana three three when allies attack deal one to battling enemies in enemy nexus, that would be a seven. It'd be a six or a seven. Um, because MF can level up, I'm not trying to count level up as part of this, but I think seven is still realistic and still okay because, um, as we've seen, Bilgewater has spell power synergy. Um, this is probably still a 7 overall. Like, yes, it gives you some some plunder effects, but uh, as we're seeing more and more of the cards, I'm realizing that, like... Uh, okay, I'm going to go I'm gonna go for an 8, only because uh, it does help unlock some plunder synergy, and it helps unlock um, powder kick synergy, so I'm generally pretty happy. Is the vanilla a 6? It's hard, right? Because I know plunder exists in the game, and so, like you know, a quarter of all decks are going to run Plunder, which means that, like, even if she was a 6, well, she's a 7 in the meta game because Plunder is reasonably common, and then with a game that has Plunder, um, like, in a deck that's building for Plunder, she's an 8. I think this is fine to put her at a 7 or something like that. And so she levels up when she has seen you attack four times. So this is our second champion with Scout Synergy, right? And this is, we go way back to the very first reveal where we had Quinn and all that stuff. And it's like, oh, here we finally come full circle. Here's where our scout synergy is. So there we go. We've got that going on. Um, so that's going to be fun to keep in mind. Next up is level two Misfortune, um, who is a three mana four four, which is when allies, a three mana four four overwhelm, when allies attack, deal one three times to battling enemies and the enemy nexus. Now, I want to point out that this specifically does not have... Um, this is a couple things, okay? So the first thing is Tough destroys this, right? Because it's different levels of hitting. It is it is beaten by Tough. Um, because of how Powder Kegs work, this saying three damage versus hitting three different times um, is the same thing when Powder Kegs are concerned. Obviously not with Tough, but otherwise, yes. And, and of course, it's good with Barrier, but... Um, it also never matters when hitting Nexus. Um, it is the same as dealing three damage to Nexus. Um, now, what is different is if you have things like Funsmith, which gives you just raw spell power, um, this probably says it deals two three times to battling enemies in the Nexus, as opposed to dealing one four times to battling enemies in the Nexus. I am not certain about that, but I'm pretty sure the one becomes a two. Regardless, a three mana four for Overwhelm that deals three damage on attack is at least an eight. Um, it combos probably to more like a 9. Um, leveling up, to be fair, is kind of hard, right? This is a 3 drop that has to... The 3 health unit has to live until at least round 6, probably. Uh, because even if you get to attack twice on 3, you're defending on 4. You're attacking twice on 5. Before they kill Misfortune with a slow effect. Um, and then she, you know, flips on the end of 5. Okay, now on 7, this attacks. And that's optimal, right? That is, I mean, okay, unless you have Relentless Pursuit, right? If you can if you can rally on four, this flips on four with your two attacks, and then she's here on five ready to go. That is possible if you're playing rally. But um, if you're not waiting around to rally, you need two pursuits because you don't get scout back. Um, 
But yeah, can be good, obviously. Obviously, it synergizes with scouts. You can send the scouts in, Misfortune shoots over the top, then you go in again with Misfortune herself if you want, and yeah, things are getting things are getting whittled down, right? In any game with scouts, she's hitting the Nexus for six, just because you're using scouts. Uh, anyone who's blocking the scouts is taking at least three damage to start things out. Very, very good card overall. Um, definitely amazing. I might want to go ten, honestly. It's probably a ten. Th this card is absolutely absurd. Um, I mean, absolutely, absolutely absurd. If you can level her up, she is amazing. As we'll see down the line, there's actually some more synergy with this kind of effect. Uh, okay, this is the skill. This is bullet time. Deal three. Yep, great. Uh, so double up is, I believe, her champion spell. It is a six mana fast spell that deals two to an enemy unit. And if it kills it, deals four to the enemy nexus. Now, again, this is something that will buff up things like spell power, as we saw from Parlay. Um, if you have two barrels, Parlay does three to the unit and three to the nexus. So if you have two barrels, double up does four to the unit and six to the nexus. This is obviously in and of itself half of the way to Swain's level up. It is nexus damage, which is nice. It is fast, which is nice. But it's basically an expensive mystic shot. It's a four mana extra expensive mystic shot, but it can deal nexus damage. Is this worth it? Um, I'm going to say no. I think ultimately this is a little bit too slow. I don't think you super need the value. Now, it might really be that you're doing... I'm going to spend a little bit of time, right? So if you slot through a random deck, I think it's not a good card. Now, what about with MF Synergy? I'm going to go with a six. Um, well, if you're using scouts, right, you are hitting, you have level two misfortune, you attack with your scouts, um, blocking units take three damage, but one of them lives. But it lives with two health. It's like, well, now I double up, I kill that unit, I hit face, now that thing can't block, let's go again. Um... So there's something kind of there where there's ways to maybe soften up your enemies and then get through for double up at the end. That is something I can see. Um, I I still hesitate to call this a great card. Like, it can be a finisher, right? It is face damage, right? Now, I want to point out, it must hit an enemy unit. It cannot hit an allied unit. Um, so you can't shoot your barrels to deal four to face or five to face. Uh, but in a world where we have a lot of barrels, and realistically, Misfortune and barrels generally line up pretty well together, um, this is reasonably likely to say, okay, yeah, we're playing a double up deck, um, you know, we're using double up as a finisher, we're doing lots of AoE damage, you know, it's hard for them to block, we've gotten their face down to like six, let's get a finisher. Yeah, it's decent in that case, right? Um, it is an okay finisher, because there's not a lot of spells that hit face damage for much. I'm still not immediately a fan. Maybe I'm really underrepresenting and underrating what a barrel chain can do, but I'm just still not instantly about it. Um, here is Make It Rain. Make It Rain is a two mana spell that deals one to three different random enemies. Deal one to three different random enemies. Okay, so this is. Um, uh, oh, and by the way, from my experiences playing this set, um, this is. I guess it's kind of a spoiler, but um, I, I played as the set about a week ago um, to like help test for bugs and stuff. Um, Oracle's Eye worked on this spell. My opponent put Make It Rain on the stack. I Oracle's Eye and I could see what units were going to die. Um, I don't know if that was lying to me. I don't know if that has changed since then. It is a possibility. All you know, all things are final when they're actually final. This game, of course, is going to have patch updates at some point, and this might change. But I'm pretty certain, unless I am hallucinating, I remember Oracle's Eye worked on this effect, um, which is very interesting because now on the defensive side, I know who to buff or give um, barrier to or whatever. Um, this is deal one to three different random enemies. Um, this probably works with barrels as well. It will deal two or three to three different random enemies. Um, it should future-proof itself to where it will pick new targets, I believe. Actually, I'm not certain about that. Um, so I know Rasa, like when you play Rasa the Sunderer, it, it picks new targets when um, they drop. Um, it could be that this card doesn't retarget. I am not completely certain. But ultimately, do I care about this card? Um, I mean, it is it is very clearly um, Magic Missiles uh, from Hearthstone, uh, if you want to make that comparison. Um, that means it can it can low roll and hit face three times if you don't want it to. It is obviously some XP towards Swain. Again, it synergizes pretty well with barrels, which should be two to three different random enemies, which is good. If it does future-proof itself and it retargets if a unit dies to, like, glimpse beyond or something, um, this makes it a lot better of a card because it's it, it will always at least deal three damage, unless it hits tough, obviously. Um, is this a good card? Uh, for for two mana, it is often Static Shock without the, the card draw. Is that a good card? 
I I can't see myself wanting to run this card on purpose. And it's because of the unreliability. Um, it might kill two spiders. It might kill three spiders. It might hit the thing with six health. I, I, I can't call this card above average. Uh, is it good with synergies? It's slightly better with synergies. Um, but realistically... Uh, also, this actually might be MS spell instead of develop. I'm actually not certain. Um, MS might be make it rain. Uh, whatever. Who cares? Um, I just... It's probably decent with barrels, but I have a hard time liking this spell. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's actually fine with barrels. I think it's still four overall because this is only good in very specific circumstances. It will frequently trigger Nexus Strike, which is good. Actually, okay, here, here's one thing I want to bring up. is It is a spell you can play on turn two when your opponent summons a 3-2 or a 2-1 or whatever to get Plunder. Okay, in that regard, it's actually pretty solid, right? It is, it is a way, like, you can parlay on one, you can make it rain on two. It is ways to make Plunder happen. Or to Nexus Strike so that you can get XP on Sejuani and Gangplank and all of that. In those respects, okay, sure, right? And Plunder is pretty common in this set. So, okay, I take it back. I think this card's decent. Um, it, it it has good synergies. I think it's a 5 overall. Uh, but Plunder is reasonably common, so it's it's an okay card. All right, we go next to Crackshot Corsair. It is a 1-mana one 1-1. One, one. see, we, Yeah, it's a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one that has Misfortune's text. When allies attack, deal one to the enemy nexus. So it is a one drop that you put down. You often consider not attacking with it, although if you have no opposing blocker, obviously you, you take your two free damage. Um, but it is a way on your attacks to trigger plunder for free. It has scout synergy, which is, of course, it will go twice. Um, this will eat up your um, uh, powder kegs, which can be very bad. Um, it is essentially a slightly weaker version, well, in some respects, of the Noxian 2 one that does this, but only does it selfishly. This allows you to do it for your scouts. Um, <clears throat> is this a good card? Would I, so if I'm a hard aggro deck, I would take the Noxian 2 one and I would take Legion Rearguard over this, uh, in most cases. But, because it allows me to guarantee that I plunder, right, this is a card that says, look, no matter what else you have, if this stays on your bench, you can plunder on every turn you attack. That's good, right? Uh, that is definitely good. Uh, now, is it good to slot in a random deck? No. Um, it's actually maybe a three. Um, I might even go... Actually, I'm going to go two. In a random deck, it's a two. Uh, with Planner Synergy, it's it's solid. Do you probably play this as one drop? Yeah. Do you probably play this overall? Um, in any Plunder deck? In any Nexus Strike deck? Probably not in every single one, but it's good. I think this is, this is worth including in those decks. Um, I think this is this is not that hard to cut, though. I think you could realistically cut this and use spells for your early drops. Uh, I don't think you need to hit on one very often. Um, I ultimately think, yes, Make It Rain is actually probably a stronger card than Crackshot Corsair. Uh, but who knows, right? There, there might be there might be deck types where you're actually just going a bunch of spell power and scouts and things like this to deal Nexus damage. Next up, we get Prowling Cutthroat. Prowling Cutthroat is a 1-1 one, one Fearsome Elusive. I think it's a bad card. Um... Again, it is, a, it is a way to get Nexus Strike. Um, it is a way to get Plunder. It is a way to do that. Ultimately, I feel like um, Crackshot Corsair is almost better. That said, there is synergy, right? If you drop Corsair on the ground, this is now a mostly unblockable, right? The first elusive that can block this thing is um, uh, Solitary Monk, but like Shadow Tyson can't block it. Green Glade Duo can't block it if you open attack. Um... Teemo can't block it. Level 2 Teemo can't block it. Level 1 Fizz can't block it. Like, that's all pretty decent. Um, and hey, it's it it allows you to get an extra strike in. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'm still not a big fan. I don't think this card is great. Um, I can easily see this card being skipped. That said, the one thing I want to point out, because we saw this revealed earlier, um, there is a lot of Bilgewater one-drop synergy. And I'm thinking of Twisted Fate and Vi where you are just slamming card draw. You are just jamming cards into your hand and jamming them on the board as fast as possible and just throwing things at your opponent. 
Um, it has Plunder Synergy with the like three two that buffs your one by buffs your one drops by one attack. This is now going to be a, you know a, a two one elusive for one fearsome, which is a, now an amazing card. Um, I mean two two one elusive for one is outright a great card, right? Um, two one elusive fearsome for one is is an incredible card. Um, I think it's still an overall four. This is a very specific synergy. I actually might even keep it a three. Like this is good in exactly one deck, and I think it's TF Vi, infinite card draw, infinite card spam. Um, there's probably deep, there's probably sea monsters at the end of this. You're not, you're, you might even, you might even play like a one of Nautilus, uh, and you're just slamming card draw, um, to just like, just like, just throw one drops at your opponents and, and go hard. This is an archetype that is now getting supported by seeing cards like this. Um, right. Every single time, every single there's been a new set of reveals, we're seeing more and more one drops. Actually, Fizz probably goes in the deck as well, right? It's like TF Fizz, you kind of care about Vi, um... Uh, Professor Von Yip buffs one drops. Like, I think this has to be Bilgewater Piltover. And good, because Vi is Piltover. So it's like, hey, among TF and Vi and Fizz and maybe Nautilus, because you really might play sea monsters. Um, actually, you probably just want the thing that, that, that throws treasures in your deck when you're deep and you don't run Nautilus. Uh, it's probably that, right? Um, so you're probably running, like, two Fizz, two TF, two Vi, um, a million one drops, Professor Von Yip, the, the plunder deal, you know. Yeah, that's the deck, right? You might even run a Misfortune. Uh, I don't know. That, that deck is taking shape, though. This card is actually pretty good in that deck. But only that deck. But I think that deck exists now. One drop deck exists now. Sorry, Ionia, you're not getting played in this deck. You don't have enough one drop synergy. Also, there's too many, there's too many good, well, good, worth playing Bilgewater one drops to make Ionia um, affinity good, unless Ionia can force something to top deck. If, if you can force affinity by jamming a card from your hand on top of your deck, affinity decks are amazing. Uh, but not, not here. Um, all right, we then go to the Siren. We go to Misfortune's Ship. Misfortune's Ship is a 7-mana 3-7. Um, it is a 7-mana 3-7 draw card, and when I'm attacking, all your spells and skills deal one extra damage, right? And it's a 7-mana 3-7 Scout, so it's it's kind of a 7-mana 6-7, which is still bad, by the way. Um, so that, that would be very bad, right? Like, if we jam this into a random, you know, crappy deck, it's a 7-mana 6-7, which is a bad card. Uh, which is like a three, maybe it's a two, uh, but it's a, it's a seven and a six, seven draw card. Draw card's obviously very, very good, so it goes back up to like a four, maybe it's a five. Um, seven and a six, seven draw card is is okay for a seven drop, right? Like there's there's really good things on seven that exist, right? Um, like Ross the Sunderer used to cost seven. Yes, it was broken. It got nerfed to eight, but like for example, right? Ross the Sunderer was a seven and a seven five that killed two things. The if state was not hard. So, okay, let's get back on topic. Um, when I am attacking and I have scout, so I attack twice per round, all your spells and skills deal one extra damage. And here is where Bilgewater finds spell power, right? Now, Misfortune, who deals one three times to blocking enemies and the enemy nexus, now deals two three times to the enemy nexus and enemy. So now, this thing is a 6-7 that with Misfortune on the board is actually a 12-7, right? Because it attacks once, it does three, and three and six for Misfortune. Um, and then attacks again and hits for three and gets blocked. Okay, so it's actually more like a 18-7, um, right? With level two Misfortune, it's an 18-7. Um, well, okay, sorry. It it adds three damage each time, so it's it's... Okay, it is 12. Sorry, I was I was I had it right the first time. It adds three damage, it adds three damage, it itself is three damage, it itself is three damage, that's twelve. Um Right. So in the right hands, the card is amazing. In fact, it's probably a nine, it might even be a ten. Um I'll give it a six overall because like misfortune is going to happen, and level one misfortune is still okay. You're still dealing two damage to the nexus, two damage to enemy uh, enemy blockers, that's that's solid. But as a combo card, like this is absurd, right? This is two attacks for misfortune, right? It has scout in and of itself. Um, it draws a card. Its stat line is not good, but it's playable. Um, just in that, like, it will at least survive. Like, this is a combo piece that survives as the combo piece. You can play this on 7, wait, do something else on 8, double attack, it's fine. It will actually survive to do the second attack in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, this is definitely incredible. Um, absolutely definitely incredible. Uh, love this card overall. Uh, overall, it's probably an 8. I think the Siren is definitely very, very good. Now, this is fairly slow, right? Um, it is a 7 and a 3-7 that does nothing by itself. Um, it draws MF, but if MF is not in play already, you can attack for a 3-7. And that is not very good. Um, there's a decent chance that your opponent's 7-drop can kill this. Uh, also, theoretically, it is cooling strikeable. 
by the way, Culling Strike works here. Um, it gets killed by, you know, things like Reckoning and whatnot. All the, all the, you're not big enough, go die. But realistically, Reckoning is going to be less commonly played because we're getting more deck archetypes, right? Uh, Culling Strike might be more played. I'm not sure. Uh, it's hard to say. But it's kind of worth noting that, like, as there are more cards in a set, individual cards tend to be played less. Right, just by the nature of there being more decks, there will be less Iona Demasi elusive. This is like a really good meta call, and it might be, but there is technically probably less culling strikes. I don't believe all the ships have three attack, so it's not like you run culling strike as a meta call because everyone's running ships. Um, it's only good against MF ship. Um, so yeah, I think I think this card can legitimately be a ten in the right deck. I think this is an obvious auto include in an MF deck. I think there's no way you don't run at least one in an MF deck. I would be shocked if at any point without this card being nerfed, this deck, this card was not run in a deck that ran at least two misfortunes. I would be shocked. That would that would supremely shock me. Um and MF is like definitely an archetype, right? Like she's gotta be good. Um okay. So that is it for the imager album. We now head over. Whoops. Alright, I tabbed over to the wrong thing, but we are back. Okay, so we have more than just this. We have all of the rest of the cards. We have all the rest of the cards, and there are a lot. Um, now, the best way I could really do it is like this, where we kind of see all of them side by side. We're going to only go over the ones that um, we have not reviewed so far. There's a chance we end up accidentally doing one twice, or there's a chance that we um, accidentally skip one. My bad if that happens, but I've written down the ones that I thought I hadn't seen yet, and so we'll go into it. All right, so the first one we haven't seen yet is... Jailbreak. And hopefully these cards are legible. Uh, I'm just going to hope this is all good enough. Uh, apologies, it makes it hard to read. Um, one mana slow spell. Summon a random one cost follower from any faction. Okay, so it is a random one cost follower. Now that is weak than playing an intentional one cost follower. However, it is of itself a spell. So uh, I think back to a card that I thought was quite good that um, I guess not everyone thinks was, which is the one mana two one attune in Bilgewater that gives you uh, this one spell mana so that it's a one mana two one and yes, you have to play Jailbreak, like you have to let, you know use the card, but you now have two one drops, right? You've got kind of a turn one four two in some cases. That is definitely pretty decent. Um, that seems fairly playable. Again, here's more one drop synergy. It's a way to get more one drops into your deck. Uh, that you can main deck here. The the one drop synergy deck is still going. Is it a good vanilla card? Summon a random one cost unit is not good. Um, it's a two. It's maybe a one. It's actually it's a two because it uses spell mana. Um, is it good in a combo deck? Yeah, I think the one drop deck can run this. It is also a spell, so there's there are occasionally times where you want spell synergy, such as Fizz. Um, is an overall good card? Not really, no. But in the one drop deck, it's good. Next up is Yeben Warned. One mana slow spell. Again, we're seeing a lot of one mana stuff, although I don't believe there's one mana spell. Well, no, there's one mana spell generation, right? The um, the two mana one to um, attune, create a random one mana spell, can create Yeben Warned, it can create Jailbreak. So Yeben Warned is a one mana slow, give an enemy vulnerable this round. If it also dies this round, draw a card. This is excellent right? This allows you to have your one drop army on board and then say, look, I generated this card or I main deck this card. You probably main deck this card. And you say, okay, I finally have a four attack unit. We're going to give your warding stones vulnerable and kill it. We're going to grab your Heimerdinger or your Karma or not that you play your Ezreal early either, but you grab that thing. Cool. It's vulnerable. Um, this allows you to use a crappy attacker to gang, you know, to, to screw over a um, a good blocker. It allows you to, you know, keep your scout alive by challenging something that's very, very weak. Um, this card is honestly, so it's very slow, um, and that can be a problem. But I think it's actually an above average card in and of itself. Um, being one mana makes it incredibly versatile. Being slow can kind of suck, but I think it's overall a pretty good card. Um, I think it's overall a pretty good card. Yeah, I think that. I think that's true. We saw a Black Market Merchant. By the way, there's more um, enemy draw synergy. There's like two or three more cards like this. So this card gets better. Um, Coral Creatures, that's the one I was talking about. When I'm summoned, could a one-mana spell in hand. That's this. 
Um, Dreadway Deckhand, I think, is better than I initially thought. Okay, so Hired Gun now exists. Hired Gun is a 2-minute two 2-3. Two, That's the vanilla test. Um, when I'm summoned, grant strongest... Or, sorry, grant the strongest enemy vulnerable. That's quite good, right? That that lets you give their buffed Zed vulnerable or their solitary monk vulnerable or whatever. It is vulnerable forever, not vulnerable for this round. Um, that is quite nice. Um, I generally like this a fair bit. I think this is a solid card. Uh, do you... So, like, if you play it on two on curve, uh, you probably found a way to... You know, maybe maybe you, you tag the 2-2 two -two and you're able to go after it. Maybe you play this on 4 and it allows your Zed to, like, challenge it with Quick Attack or something. Like, there's some really good stuff here. Um, this this works really, really, really well in a Zoo deck. Zoo decks really, really like board control. Um, and this is a great way to get you board control. I think it's a good card overall. It, it doesn't... It, it is definitely good enough to play. Absolutely. All right, next up we got a 2-mana slow spell. More Powder. Summon 2 Powder Kegs. Uh... So obviously it's really bad in almost any deck um, that's not, you know, damage synergy. I think it's, it's okay to be a one. Um, but in a Powder Keg deck, I don't like this. Like, I would much rather play Dreadway Deckhand and get, get a 2-2 two -two instead of a Powder Keg. Um, right, like, like to start to compare these cards, right? These are the same cost, essentially. They're the same speed. One gives you a 2-2 two -two and a Keg. One gives you two Kegs. A 2-2 two -two is better than a Keg, right? Just automatically. Now, of course, this is spell mana. That is valuable. That is meaningful. That matters. Um, it lets you play Misfortune on three and then play more powder and then attack and suddenly you're doing three to all blockers. That is a good thing. That is very strong. Um, there are ways to set this up so that you play more powder and then they try to do some kind of effect and you go, nope, fast effect, static shock for three. Um, like, that exists. I still think this is a pretty weak card overall. Even in Powder Kick Synergy, I would rather do other things. I think this is an overall weak card. I realist like, there is a world where this card is playable. Like, don't get me wrong. I think this card can be main decked in some cases, but I just don't see it. Uh, like, it is possible. Like, sorry, I, I can see it, but I think it is unlikely. I think there are better cards to, to, to play. Next up, we get Pilfered Goods. Two mana burst spell. Draw a card from the enemy deck. And if you have hit plunder, you draw two instead. Wow. So two mana draw two at burst speed is very good. That is very, very, very good. Is And plunder is remotely common, right? Like, it is going to happen because all you have to do is just hit your opponent's face at some point this game and then play pilfered goods. Yeah. Yeah, that is going to happen. Sure, it's not always on demand, but I think I would legitimately run this card in almost every deck in the game. I might actually put it as an 8 because I would legitimately play this card in every deck in the game. There is almost no way I'm not hitting Nexus at some point. Um, like I was playing some Karina Control last night just to like play it, um, and I had a Static Shock face sometimes, and I wouldn't mind drawing two cards as a result. Um, yeah, I think this card is absolutely amazing. Now, I talked about this in the last time we talked about uh, pilfering cards. Um, I don't think two random opponent cards are as good as two of your cards, um, but for two mana, we take those. Um, I think it is too good of a deal to pay two spell mana and get two cards. Yes, they might be dead, um, but there's some extra synergy here. It's it's a little bit minor, but it's it's worth noting, um, and and it, it means more and more as you get more cards. You now know what your opponent can't draw. If you know their deck list has two commander ledresses and you drew one commander ledress from Pilfered Goods you know their odds of drawing their second Ledros are really, 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 really low. Um, and you can choose to never play it and keep that information from them, right? You now know something they don't know, which is like, ah, I took one of your Mystic Shots. You are unlikely to find it. Um, if, like, if there's actually one of, like, like if, if Pursuit of Perfection decks um, actually exist um, and are good, and you yoink... Like, some other one ofs they really care about that they're hoping to get at some point, and you know they can never find, like, Heimerdinger this entire game? That's really good, right? So, the, the information gathering is actually valuable. Uh, again, you can steal Yetis, so, like, this is good against Yeti decks. Uh, this, again, can steal Ash Arrow, which is quite good. Yeah, there's some really good stuff here. I could easily, like, I legitimately believe I will run this card in almost every single deck, and this means that Ash is basically unplayable. Um, because I actually believe that half of all decks will run Pilfered Goods, on on week one of of the set launch, I I legitimately believe that 
This is going to be the most played card in week one of the set. It's common. It's in the new it's in the new region. This is going to get played. Which means Ash literally can't use her spell uh, because you will always pill for Enchanted Crystal Arrow. Like, that is a call I am making. This card is amazing. All right, next up we get Double Trouble. Three mana spell. Summon two random one cost followers from any faction. So it is Wanted, or sorry, it's Jailbreak, but doubled. It costs a bit more because of card efficiency. Now, this is actually remotely playable. Right, so this is this is basically playing House Spider, uh, but for spell mana. Um, I mean, roughly, right? Like it's gonna it's gonna average out to at least three three. But there might be good summon effects. There could be some really good stuff there. This is arguably better than House Spider. It costs arguably more than House Spider, maybe. Um, I like this card. I think you can play this card in, in other decks. Um, this is amazing in the one drop deck. I think it's a very good card. I think it's a very very good card. Golden Narwhal is a 3-mana 2-4 elusive vulnerable. It's the first card that isn't Powder Kegs I've seen that is vulnerable on your side. It's not just granting things vulnerable, it just is vulnerable. Um, is this a good card? Not really. Um, I want to go down to 2. Right, it's it's almost there to be an elusive blocker, and yet they can they can gum this thing up by you know throwing a random token at it and letting the elusive go through anyway. I don't like this card very much. I don't know why I'd play it. Um... Like, okay, the stat line is okay, I guess, right? Like, th three for two, four elusive is actually pretty good, but vulnerable pulls it down. Um, I don't I don't see where the combo potential is either. Realistically, I don't see what's special about this. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you really, really want more elusives, like, there's maybe something here. Um, but it's got, no, I just, I just, I just don't see it. I don't think this card is good. So here's the card I was talking about, right? Jagged Taskmaster is a 3-mana 4-3, which is just good in and of itself, but 1-drop synergy, and how many 1-drops have we seen? Bilgewater has like five or like four or five of them, as well as two spells that create them. 1-drop deck exists. It absolutely exists. This is going to be a real thing. Um, Jagged Taskmaster is good. It probably goes up a point or two in my evaluation because of how much 1-drop synergy we've seen now. But yeah, this is now, this is a, this is a real archetype now. Um, all right, Jaw Hunters, four one challenger for three. Uh, four one challenger for three is kind of bad. It's not. It's not horrible. It is. It is a basically um, a, a slow damage nuke. Uh, I'm blanking. I feel like there's a there's a there's a four mana deal damage to a unit spell that I just like can't think of, but I don't think that actually exists. Uh, I mean, it's, it's basically like. So it, before reading further, it's it's like a specific thermogenic beam. Um, but when I am summoned, create a random sea monster in hand. Right. So it's a thermogenic beam draw card, um, which is quite good. Right. This is this is probably a six. Uh, with synergy, it's maybe a seven. Um, this is a good card. Right. I think this is this is this is quite good. Um, it, is, it is it is a four one challenger draw card for three. Like this is this is solid. Right. This will kill a unit and give you a unit in hand. This card is good. This card just is just good. Yes, it can be removed, but if you do that, they still drew a card. I mean, this is basically, right, uh, the the you know I think of is Shadow Assassin. 3 mana 2 to Elusive, draw a card. I would argue draw a card is better than create a random sea monster, don't get me wrong. Um, but it is 4-1 Challenger. So it is it is Trifarian Glory Seeker, but it costs one more. Um, you don't usually need the 5 damage. 4 is usually enough. It's It also can block, which is an upgrade as well. Um, maybe it's actually more like a 7. Maybe it's more like this. I think it's this, right? This is this is actually a very good card. I could I could play this in most decks and be happy about it. And Sea Monster decks are, are happy as well. Lore of the Depths. Three mana burst spell. Reduce the cost of sea monster allies everywhere by one, and then draw a sea monster. Okay, so this is this is mobilize, right? This is mobilize, but it replaces itself, which is a lot better than mobilize. So now a sea monster, and also, by the way, it's feature-proof, right? It works in your deck, it works in your hand, it works things that you generate later on with, with um, Jaw Hunters. Um, this is actually, in and of itself, a good card. Um, now, you have to play it with a sea monster deck, right? So if you're not playing sea monsters, this card is garbage. Um, this is replace me, turn me into a card that, you know, I've spent two extra mana to get. This is objectively bad if you're not playing sea monsters. Um, so it, it's an automatic one in non-sea monster. And sea monster is a pretty specific archetype. Um, but... Outside of that fact, what do we got going on here? Um, in a Sea Monster deck, it's pretty good, right? It's replace me, but get your units out of your deck faster. Yeah, it's still an overall, like, a two. Uh, sea Monster is too specific. Um, 
I mean, we're going to keep the one, to be honest, because I think it's fair. Uh, ah, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's a made-up It's a made up scale anyway. Uh, okay, so sure, fair enough. Um, we then get Monkey Idol. Monkey Idol is a 3-mana, 0-4, round start, deal 2 to me, and summon a Powder Monkey. It is a mobile menu, you can't attack or block with it. It just simply makes two Powder Monkeys and then dies. Um, here is what a Powder Monkey does. It is a 2-1 Ephemeral, last breath, damage the enemy Nexus. That's pretty sweet, right? So even if they don't attack you or they don't block or anything, you still manage to hit the next for one. So this is a card, right? This is a card that essentially is a three mana, vaguely four two, deal two to the enemy Nexus. It guarantees on both round three and round four that you get yourself, um, uh, what is it called? You get yourself, I'm, I'm blanking, I know the card exists, uh, you're you're plundering twice, right? You're plundering on three. You're plundering on four. Uh, but to be fair, to be very clear, right? You this is last breath on ephemeral. So if you don't attack with the card, if you don't attack with the card, or if they don't attack into you, you cannot get plunder off of this, right? You have to use that card. And and actually, it's on four and five, right? Because I'm not doing anything on three. Now, what's nice is you can give this thing tough. You can give this thing tough, and it's suddenly a better card. Um. If you throw Chain Vest on this thing, it now makes four Powder Monkeys. If you throw Chain Vest on this thing and then play, you know, a healing effect at any point down the line, which um, we have uh, two different ways. We have one in Bilgewater. Um, that's like the six mana four or five that heals and, and uh, rallies. And you have um, Maokai's Spell, or you can make Spell itself, which is in Shadow Wiles, which heals all allies for three. You can also run like Potion of Healing or whatever. But this allows you to create a token factory. Um, now, yeah, you would have to, like, run Demacia to get tough. I believe that's the only way to main deck tough. Uh, so good luck actually getting that. But um, not garbage. If you're running Ionia, there's ways to give uh, bonus health to things. You could give this thing barrier. Actually, you couldn't because it's on round start, so there's no way to give it barrier in time. Um, but there's ways to kind of cheat this to make more Powder Monkeys, uh, which is realistically not bad, right? This is this is unstoppable in some ways. Uh, you, you throw the two in at them, they have to block it. Yeah. Is Monkey Idol good in general? No. Uh, it's probably a three. Is it? Is it worse than a three? It's maybe a two. Um, is it good in specific cases? Kind of. Uh, I think it's probably overall a bad card. Like, there's there's cool things that make the gears turn in your head to think about, like, hey, what could this really be? But I think it's old, It's like it's ultimately a bad card. Uh, but but still cool. It's still interesting, right? And and it may well be that this actually still slots in. It is a good spot in a deck that was having a hard time. Because one thing that's also worth pointing out, right, is that you obviously want to throw these things away. So it is obvious misfortune synergy. You're just going to attack with these things and have Misfortune cast your spell. That is going to exist. Uh, so there, there's combo there. there. There's some combo there. We already saw Petty Officer. We already saw Pick a Card. Pocket Aces is a 3-mana burst spell that grants an ally plus 2, plus 1. That is generally fairly weak, right? Keep in mind that 3-mana burst buff spells are things like Standalone and Take Heart. Those are obviously far better. Uh, but when I am drawn, I cost 1 less this round. It is another two mana spell when drawn, right? We have a lot of cards here that really like playing two mana cards. There's there's a one drop deck and there's a two mana card deck. Um, and this is a two mana card that gives a permanent buff. Is this good? I think it's not. Um, even if you're guaranteeing this costs only two, I still don't like it that much, right? It is, it is permanent Radiant Strike for one more mana, vaguely. I, I just... I think permanent buffs that don't grant health are not very good because the unit just dies anyway pretty quickly and doesn't keep the permanent buff regardless. Um, it is a much faster Laurent Blade Keeper, but eh? So, okay, here, here I'll try to be more optimistic, right? So it can be two mana Radiant Strike, which can let you get, which can let you save your Fior or whatever. And for only one more mana... For only one more mana, you keep the two attack. Because you're keeping the one health anyway, right? You're keeping the one health anyway because that's why you're casting Radiant Strike is to survive something. And then once you've taken damage, it doesn't matter that your max health went down. You kept it regardless. So it's really only better than Radiant Strike that the two attack stays. For one or two extra mana, do I care about two permanent attack? Maybe in a full aggro deck. Right? If I'm playing Zed 
and I, you know, get to jam this onto Zed, and Zed gets to keep the plus two, plus one, and now Zed is a five, three forever, and it becomes a six, four when it levels up. Okay, I can see that, right? If if I'm somehow playing, you know, if I'm giving someone tough and keeping the two one, okay, I can see that, right? If I am buffing um, anything with tough and rally, like realistically, or, or tough and tough and scout cares a bit more, yeah, maybe it's decent, maybe it's decent, but I think in most cases it's not. I still probably don't see us running this card, but it is, like, if you have an, I mean, if you're playing an aggro deck, and you have a way of, you know, you attack on three, and this only costs two mana, so you can still afford, like, an Elixir of Wrath or something, um, whatever goes unblocked, you give it plus two attacks, that hits for two, so it's instantly Mystic Shot, um, for what it's worth, right, this is Mystic Shot with, with upside. I still think it's only a five, uh, but I can see it being good. All right, we get into more fun cards, Slight of Hand. Three mana slow spell that only is playable if you plunder. I don't know if you could jam this card and it does literally nothing, or if you are able to, um, um, if you have to have plunder force even playable from your hand. But draw a random non champion from the enemy hand. We have hand disruption now in LOR. That is a big deal. That is absolutely a big deal. Now, I want to point out sleight of hand is slow speed. So if there is a spell you really care about that you don't want them to steal, you can play it in reaction to not lose that card. Um, I do not know if Oracle's Eye will work with Sleight of Hand on your side to let you know what cards you're going to lose, um, as it did with Make It Rain when I was playtesting. I don't know that answer. But Hand Disruption, like, I have a hard time not calling this a 7. Um, actually, no, that's not true. There are a lot of decks that don't want this card. There are a lot of there are a lot of decks that don't want this card, but it is three mana, go up one hand size compared to your opponent, right? Uh, and in general, I think uh, you know essentially force your opponent to discard is better than um, is in a lot of cases better than drawing, um, because sort of by nature. The fact that they are holding out of the card means it's something they need later on. It's a more crucial piece down the line. So a lot of times you will actually steal something that is very good. You will you can't steal Ezreal or Karma, so that goes down in value. Um, actually, that's going to take it down, right? The fact that it's a non-champion really does lower it in value quite a bit. Um, I think four is an okay spot to put it for a generic deck. Um, if you're playing steal their cards, if you're if you're plundering a lot, I mean steal their cards is a plunder deck by the way because all of those those triggers have plunder on them. Um, I think we, we end up here. Um, I think this card is great in a plunder deck. It's great in a disruption deck. It is great in a play the opponent's cards deck. I think it could be very, very good. Um, it is also draw a random non-champion from the enemy hands. It is draw, which means it levels up Twisted Fate. Next up, we have a really fun card. Slotbot. Round start. Grant me 0-1 for each card you drew last round. Okay, so you play this on three. And if you happen to draw a bunch of cards and then play this on three, then it gets, you know, plus O, plus one for whatever. Okay, so if you play it as a flat card, it is a zero four shuffled. So it is on average a three mana two two. That is really, really bad. A three mana two two is a horrible card. It's maybe even a one. Um, if it lives, it's now a three mana two three. But it's a but keep in mind, right? It is a three mana zero three the turn you play it. That is horrible. On round four, it is a three mana two two, but it's already round four, so it's useless. On round five, it is a th it is a three mana two three, roughly, um, or three two, or a four one, or whatever. This is horrible. This is a terrible, terrible card if you are not jamming through cards. But if you are, if you are drawing three cards around because of twisted fate stuff or whatever, um, it it comes down as a you know. 3 mana 3, 3 on 4, which is not great, right? That makes it a 4 um, on, like, a rating scale. But then if you draw 3 more cards, it's a 3 mana 4, 5. And it's a 3 mana 6, 6. And it's a 3 mana 7, 8. It's like, oh, okay. That's actually quite good, right? It It's still fairly specific. Um, Like, there are times that you will draw this and have some card draw and it will work. But... Yeah, you're, this, this is another card that supports the let's draw a million cards. They're probably all one drops so we can play them. Let's just let's just keep going. Um, that is one that I can see happening. Brash Gambler, we saw. 
Chum the Waters we saw. Island Navigator is a new one. Island Navigator is a 2-4 for Scout. Okay. Um, that, that There's obviously more text, but it's a 2-4 it's a Scout. So it's an optimistic 4-4. Four, four. Um, that, that is a 3. Uh, but when I am summoned, create a random one cost unit from any faction and give that unit scout. Oh my. Yeah. So if you're doing nothing special at all, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of say, okay, well this is this is a a two four, maybe a four four, so call it a three four. Um it is a three four that summons a two one. Um because that, that scout unit is going to die right in the first combat. Uh, the fact that it has Scout almost doesn't matter, unless you get something really lucky and it has Elusive or something. Uh, but it is any faction, so it's a really, really big pool. You can't, like, go Mono Bilgewater and get the, like, Elusive Fearsome. That's not going to happen. Also, it is a one-cost unit, not a follower. So, again, it can give you Teemo. Um, it can give you Fizz. Those are great things with Scout. Um, it can also give you Garbage, but it can also give you Omenhawk, which is pretty sick. Um yeah, this is, this is, I think it's an above average card. I would be reasonably happy just jamming this in any random deck uh, because it's just bodies on the, on the field. Um, in, yeah, this, this is an auto include, I think in one drop land. Um, overall, it's a good card. I think it's, I think it's a good card. Next up, we have Mystifying Magician. Play me. I am a two, I'm a four mana two, two. Not good, obviously. Um, but when you play this card, transform an ally into a random five cost follower from any faction. All right. Get you a random five cost follower. Um, and you get your random five cost follower on four, right? So you are now you can never trigger uh, summon effects with that. Transform doesn't doesn't do that. So, you know, Radiant Guardian would be a, a fairly weak option. Um, Rekindler, not Rekindler, sorry. Um if you want an eight cost follower, sure. Um, Ethereal Remitter, I think, costs five and is a four three. Which is obviously not very good either. So there are some bad cards, right? And also keep in mind that you are probably targeting on average a two two with this card, right? This is a four mana two two that is probably transforming a two two roughly into a random five cost follower, um, which means that you are replacing your 2-2 with this, and you're really playing a 4-drop that becomes a random 5-cost follower. Is a 4-drop that is a random 5-cost follower good? No. It's a, it's a, it, you're transforming your 4-drop into a 5-cost follower that doesn't do anything. Now, to be fair, there are some things that are interesting. If you bricked on some of your random 1-drops and they're really, really bad, you can replace it. If you have powder kegs... You can make it a random five cost follower and keep a two two. You can upgrade beyond that, right? Um, in those cases, this is decent. Um, it can take something very very bad and turn it into something pretty decent. Um, that said, it's still probably very bad. This is at this is an optimistic six. Um, it can be a tempo play, but your but your tempo play is not that good. Like it, it's opt it can be optimistically a four out of seven seven, right? Because you can get yourself a 5-5 five, five tough, it's a 2-2, two, two, and what you transformed was a powder keg. It can be a 4-mana 7-7. Seven, seven. That is the upside. However, I am guessing, and I could be very wrong here because I'm not... I can look after the fact, maybe, if I have time, at, like, t show me all of the 5-drop followers in every region. Okay, what are my... What are my... Uh, you know, what, what's my likelihood? But I... I'm not sure, right? I'm not, I'm not sure we're going to see it. Also, apparently we're calling them factions now and not regions. It was very explicitly regions initially, and it's back to factions. Whatever. Um, Playful Trickster, we saw. I think it's still bad. Riptide's still very good. Salvage, I think it's still good. Beast Below is still good. TF, I think it's still good. Yordle Grifter. Yordle Grifter now exists. Okay, Yordle Grifter, what have you got? Um, Yordle Grifter is a 4 mana 3 3. When I'm summoned, create a warning shot in hand. Okay, and warning shot, by the way, if uh, it wasn't obvious or you didn't realize it already, is the zero mana deal one to the Nexus Burst spell. Um, okay, so a four mana three through that, that deals one to the Nexus is a bad card, right? Um, it's it's probably a two. It's not completely garbage. Again, there's some Plunder Synergy, uh, but it's a, I would not run this card. I, even if I was a Plunder deck, I wouldn't run this card. Um, but I am Bilgewater Allegiance. I have Bilgewater Allegiance. There's only so many Piltover cards I really need to play in one drop the land, so okay, maybe. Not that this is actually the one drop deck, but um, maybe you are playing Bilgewater Allegiance. Um, and if I do that, I draw one from the enemy deck. 
Okay, so it is telling you that the Bilgewater Allegiance deck is the Steal From Your deck deck. It, it is the Steal Enemy Cards deck. And we've got like four or five of these now, right? We can steal from hand, we can steal from deck, we can steal two from deck, we can steal this from deck. Um, if we can keep the unit alive, it makes them all cheaper, which makes them actually playable. Um... It, you know, I can play TF, which is probably fine and worth doing. It is, again, it's a draw from the deck, so you it, it draw effects, which is nice, so that helps TF. Um, it, it just gets you cards down that you want to just, like, throw down because it helps TF. Um, I don't know if, if one-drop land is how you play this. Probably not. But it is plunder, right? So you're probably doing Gangplank MF um, for plunder synergy because there are ways to plunder, and then that's how you get to draw from the enemy deck, because almost almost every plunder, sorry, almost every enemy draw um, effect is a plunder effect. This one is not, it's an allegiance effect. So it means that plunder allegiance uh, deck draw is a, a deck type. Um, now, four mana three, three draw card, draw a card is very good, right? Four mana three, three draw two cards is very good, but again, the cards they draw are bad. Uh, Warning Shot is a fairly bad card, but it does guarantee plunder for the rest of your stuff. Right, it always makes the warning shot, and it guarantees plunder, meaning all of your other card steals are going to work. Um, and actually, I'm gonna go to an eight. This card, I think, is actually an automatic three of in in deck steal. I think it's an automatic three of in deck steal. I might even go to nine. Um, I don't quite want to, but the fact that like you can guarantee that allegiance triggers by by playing mono bilgewater, and then you can guarantee that further plunders work because grifter gives you a guaranteed plunder. I mean, you literally cannot react to to um, to that card. You cannot react to Warning Shot. It is zero mana burst speed. It always happens. The downside. This card is good. The downside is playing deck steal gives you a little bit of extra information, but you still have to play the wrong deck that you are not ready to play. And that is the problem, right? Imagine you pull Kinku Wayfinder. This card is a four mana two three. Even if it's a three mana two three, it's a bad card. And that's the problem, right? Um... Is that that deck steal is uh, reasonably sharp? You know about a, what what like one third of your deck is going to be. That deck may still be weak, but this card is an all star in that deck. Hey now, you're an all star. All right, we have Zap Sprayfin, which is actually a name, which is cool. Zap Sprayfin is an epic. It is a four mana two two, elusive um, and um, affinity. So it's kind of a three mana two two elusive and when i'm summoned draw a spell that costs three less from your deck okay so it's in in different words it is shadow assassin and by the way shadow assassin is the best card of set one so um it is it is mimicking the literal best card of the game right it is mimicking the literal best card in the game um but it it, it costs four mana that gives you one spell mana back which is less good um and it uh, it draws only a specific spell that costs three less from your deck. So instead of Shadow Assassin coming down and you have a random card, your opponent knows that this is a cheap spell. They know that you're holding onto a cheap spell, which makes this draw effect objectively weaker. This card is objectively weaker than the best card in the game. I want you to know that, okay? It is objectively weaker than the best card in the game. Um, in basically all cases. Uh, there's a couple cases where it's better, but like realistically, no. Um... But being objectively better than, the, you know, being anywhere near the best card in the game is still amazing. Um, yeah, I like this card. Um, which feels really weird. Actually, I want to go down by a little bit. Um, I'm going to go here. Only because we're going to be in less of an elusive meta. Um, we care about blocking elusives a lot less in set two, I'm going to guess. Because uh, I think it's just like, actually, there's probably just better ways to deal with elusives. Uh, I'm just going to... I just believe that's going to be true. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm just saying it. Uh, so maybe we don't have to care quite as much, but yeah, I think this is solid. Um, I think it's a solidly good card. Um, it, and, and it's not for any specific reason. It's because it's, it's a three mana two, two elusive draw card. That is good. Next up, we get a new sea monster. We get Abyssal Eye. Abyssal Eye is a five mana three, three elusive deep. Um, now I want to point out, I want to, I want to back something up that I said earlier in the Nautilus reveal, which is, I think deep is a generically weak mechanic. Um, in constructed, you must draw 25 cards to be deep. Um, on round one, you have drawn five cards, which means you have to go for another, you have to go to round 20 without native card draw or toss to be deep. That is unattainable. If you are not trying to go deep, deep cards are very bad. Round 20 is the clock. It's round 10 
on the first fight of, of um, Expeditions, and it's round 16 on, you know, wins three plus Expeditions, right? 16, okay, Expeditions are slower. Um, 10 is going to happen a lot of the time. 16 is usually not going to, but it sometimes will. And in Constructed, it's never going to. Um, so it depends on the game, on the kind of game you're playing. I think Deep is very good on Expedition, don't get me wrong. Um, even with, with only mild synergy. But this is garbage in Constructed unless you are going for a toss deck. Or, and even a heavy draw, I think a heavy draw deck would also probably not play Deep very much. I mean, they might just to get online a little bit sooner, but I'm kind of guessing they won't. Um, either way, Abyssal Eye is a 5 mana 3 3 elusive. Um, that, if it can hit face, draws a card. Um, in general, not happy about it. Uh, in general, I don't think it's very good. Um, I think this is, you know, a 3, maybe it's a 2. It can next to strike. Um, but by the time it comes down on round 5 or later, if your opponent doesn't have removal or vulnerable or challenger or an elusive, uh, I think you're going to win the game by just having a real deck. Uh, so I don't think it's good in and of itself. But in a deep deck, it is a 5 mana 6-6 six, six elusive that they can't ignore. Um, good luck getting elusives big enough to stop this thing. It's eventually going to hit face, and you're going to start drawing cards. Um, this is great. Uh, this, is, this is a very solid card. Um, one thing that I noticed that I've uh, been doing badly when um, assessing deep is, in my mind, I'm just constantly like, well, there's obviously going to be more sea monsters, obviously going to be more deep cards, so... You know, I'm not valuing any individual deep cards as though they are the card you are trying to play. I'm saying, well, in a, in a, in a theoretical deep deck, um, do I want this over other cards? And I was evaluating these things in a vacuum, not even knowing what the other deep cards were. Um, I should be doing a better job of that, obviously, and like actually figuring out what, what the cards were going to play. I think it's a card you play. This is, this is a reasonable card to play in a deep deck, right? This is something you, that gets tossed. Um, and then gets put back in the deck by Maokai, and it is a 5-mana 6-6 six, six elusive with a great upside. Um, it is it is big enough to get tossed back in by Nautilus level up. I think it's a good card. All right. Uh, we already saw Gangplank, but we have Hunting Fleet. Hunting Fleet is a 5-mana 7-7, seven, seven, which is amazing. But when I am summoned, summon a Golden Narwhal for your opponent. So give your opponent that 2-4 vulnerable, right? Um... 2-4 Elusive Vulnerable. So be careful when you play this, right? Because if you play it um, on 5 when your opponent has an attack token, they get to attack you with this 2-4 Elusive, and that's bad for you. Um, if you play it on 5 and it's your attack, um, your 5... Basically, you played a you played a 5-mana 7-5 that had to skip its first attack. Um, that is fairly weak. Now, of course, some other card can fight the Golden Narwhal, don't get me wrong. It doesn't have to be this one, so it can just be a 7-7, seven, seven, and you've got a random, you know, shark or something that challenges it or whatever. Um, is it a decent card? Not really. I don't love it. Um, yeah, like, okay, if you're doing well on board, right? If you if you have, you know, you have a turn 4-4-3, four, four, and you jam the 7-7 seven, seven down, and then the 4-3 kills the Narwhal, and you attack with the 7-7, seven, seven, that's a good card, right? Um, but I still don't, like, it, it, it gives you board control, which is nice. Maybe it's a five. Um, I think a combo with a six. I, I don't know. Like, maybe I should put this lower. Maybe it's more like a four. Uh, I, like, I mean, the card is fine, right? It's not, it, it's not, it's not like it's actually bad. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I stick with four. I think it's just like, it's, it's fine, I guess. Bilge Water gets another scout unit. It gets Razor Scale Hunter. It's a 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. Hey, a 4-4 four, four that we care about. It is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four scout, which is very interesting, right? So now this is actually really good because of, you know, Hunting Fleet doing cool stuff and whatever. Okay, a 5 mana 4-4 four, four scout. Um, and when you play it, give an enemy of Now this is super sick, right? Because now you get to use scout with Misfortune Synergy. Um, I, vulnerable is an amazing combo with scout, by the way. Vulnerable is so good with scout because you can guarantee that your scouts live the first fight. Um, I think it's a very good card in and of itself. I would I would run this in several decks and be happy about it. Um, with MF Synergy, it's it's quite good. Um, you know, or Quinn for attacking several times. Yeah, I can see Quinn MF being being quite nice. Um, I can see this being really really good. Um, okay. Next up is Slippery Wave Rider. It is a five mana four four, elusive affinity. Affinity is give you back one spell mana. Okay, so it's kind of a 4-mana four 4-4 four, four elusive. 
it's a good card, right? Um, Kid Q Lifeblade is a 2-2 lifesteal. Now, that's really good with buffs, don't get me wrong. That's why that deck is good, is you is you, is you buff those elusives uh, to lifesteal for more. But a 4-4 a four, four elusive is solid. Um, and what we're seeing here is actually kind of a lot of decks that are running just like medium-sized, non-aggressive elusive cards, right? There's a lot more elusives, which makes sense. They swim. Um, there's a lot of vulnerable, right? There, there's a lot of... Um, soft counters to elusive, right? It's cards that are playable enough on their own, but also have to be good against elusive cards. And I like this, right? Because because they are not dead cards if you're not against elusive. They're okay if you're against elusive. Is this card okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. Because it's not really going to fit an aggro game plan. It is a random mid-range-ish minion. Maybe it's actually a four, because... No, it's a five. It's a five. Because even though it's not always actually a four-cost unit, the fact that it's elusive is really valuable. Um, it's not really a combo card in any way, but yeah, it's actually, it's not a combo card, right? It, it is there to be a generic unit that is solid to diffuse elusive aggro that you can play on round five, which is not too bad. So there's Citrus Courier, right? This was the this was the plunder heal things rally, right? This is this is how you um, play around the uh, the idol that makes all the powder monkeys because you, you make the powder monkey token, the powder monkey token hits face, um, it blows up, you plunder, you jam Citrus Courier, you have healed your idol back to full health, and you're ready to go for another round. Um, now you don't have any more Powder Monkeys, but you have something else to attack with. Um, so that, that's kind of how that's going to work. Uh, this isn't working well with, with, a, with the, uh, Forbidden Idol decks. Uh, but we saw it earlier. So we have Devourer of the Depths. Devourer of the Depths is a 6 mana 4-4 four, four deep. Okay. Um... So if it's a 6 mana 4-4, four, four, play Obliterate an enemy with less health than me. This is very good. Obliterate does not trigger Death Rattles or Last Breaths. Uh, so this can kill an Undying if you care about. Um, it will not get a level 1 Callista, but it will get a... Uh, it'll get an Ezreal. Um, it'll it'll get, you know, a fair number of things. This will kill level 1 Misfortune. Um, there's, it'll kill any Twisted Fate. Like, there's actually a pretty good number of things this will kill. Um, 6 mana 4-4 four, four, kills something small. So it's 6 mana 4-4 four, four, deal 3, right? That's actually pretty decent. Um, that's okay, right? That that's an okay card. It's a it's a, it's probably a five. Uh, maybe it's a six, but yeah, I think it's, I, I want to say it's a six. Um, without deep, I think this card is a six. Um, it's it's a little slow, but you are going to realistically find something worth killing. I think you will. You will find something worth killing. Uh, again, it is also keep in mind it is a skill, so Fizz can't dodge it. Um, now I will go down by a little bit. I'll go back down to a five because it's a slow effect. Uh, your opponent. Um, oh, sorry, it's less health than me. So, uh, it will kill Callista, it will kill level 1 Karma. Um, it will not kill level 2 Ezreal. Sorry, less health, not less attack. Um, and actually, attack buffs are more common than health buffs in general. So, this has slightly, uh, less ways of you dodging it. Uh, you can deny it, but you can't use Fizz to, to dodge it because it's a skill, not a spell. Um, I'll go with 6 again. But, if you get deep, if you get deep... If you're able to, to jam through your deck so fast that it's a turn 6 or turn 7, 7-7, seven, 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 not only is that an amazing card, it's a, it's a turn, you know, it is a 7-7 seven, seven that kills basically anything. This, this obliterates Trindamir. It doesn't kill Trindamir, it obliterates Trindamir. So he doesn't level up, he doesn't get the second form, he is gone. This is, oh, it also means, by the way, Rekindler doesn't work. This is absurdly good. This is actually probably a 9. In a deep deck, it's a 9. It's maybe a 10. Um, again, I think deep is very uncommon, so that's why the overall is a 7. I think this is... Now, it's not maybe a 3 of in a deep deck, but it might be. Because keep in mind, you don't necessarily have to be Nautilus. Because if you're just doing mass toss plus create random sea monster, you can get this card, um, you know... Even if you're not Nautilusing this stuff. This is an amazing card. This this card like outright wins you the game, I think. Um, I think it's very, very good. We already saw Double Up. So now we see Sheriff, Lariat, Rose. Six mana, six five. When summoned, grant all enemies vulnerable. Yeah, I like this a lot. Um, in So unless you're playing like hard spell control... Um, which is which is enough which is a rare enough of a deck type that I'm not gonna have that bias the score too much on vanilla. Okay, I'll go to six because spell heavy decks exist and they're not that rare, I guess. Um that it's 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 bad because those, it, it would be bad in those decks. 
Um, but would you randomly include it in any minion based deck? Absolutely you would. Um, in fact, I'm going to bring it back up to seven because you will play this card on purpose. And yeah, you will just like put this card into a random deck on purpose. Um, as long as it's not a spell heavy deck. Um, as long as it, it runs units, you're happy with this card. Um, it is slightly stat inefficient, but it gives you a really, really good thing, right? It guarantees you can play Hearthstone for one round where you can pick all of your blocks. Um, that is very good. Uh, and then, yeah, in, in a scout deck, uh, in a misfortune deck where you want to find ways to line everything up and kill them all, like it's very, very, very good, right? You, you force them into combat so that MF can kill them with her, with her abilities. Very strong stuff. Um, okay, we go to strong arm, six mana slow spell, plunder, place a follower in play into your hand. So it's better detained, but it's slow, right? It removes a unit from play. And you draw, well, you don't draw literally, but you draw a card. You get that card in, into hand. Um, you are. It is obviously not a combat trick. Again, it is slow speed. It is also not going to kill champions. But it will remove some random crappy sea monster from your opponent and replace itself in hand. Now, your opponent, of course, knows a card it is. It might be a card that you really can't play. But it can get rid of, let, let's say, Bright Steel Phalanx, which is quite nice to do. Uh, you get rid of the 9-9. And now it's yours to play later on and be happy about. Um, I think it's okay. Uh, like, because... So actually, here's the fun thing, right? I think it's actually more like a 7. And the reason being is that... Uh, okay, so it's a couple things to point out, right? It requires plunder. And here's the thing, right? It is going to be very hard. It is going to be very difficult, I think in a lot of cases, for your opponent to play some big unit... You can trigger Plunder and then get Strong Arm down in time. Now, if you are in a deck that always triggers Plunder at the beginning of every round because of, you know, cards you have that just do this kind of thing, or if you're still holding on to, um, you know, your your Snapshot for your, your zero mana burst Plunder, um, that can make the card a lot better. What's nice is, is what this is for is your opponent plays a big unit and you say, no, let me grab that real quick. It can't take Trindamir. Um, you can take, like, She Who Waters or They Who Endure, whatever. Um, and a lot of the time, that the unit they played is so expensive, they can't, you know, spend enough mana to protect against this effect. Um, but at the end of the day, if you don't have Plunder ready to go, this is a bad card. So I'm going to go down to a 4. Um, now, you can have a situation where you go for an attack... Plunder triggers. Okay, cool. Let me yoink. Okay, great. We're fine. But I think this is on average a weak card. Now, in a plunder deck where plunder can be reliable, uh, it's pretty good. Um, the upside is very, very high, but the usability is low. And that's just like, that's really worth pointing out here. Um, the upside is very, very high, but this card can really be stuck. I think this card can be stuck a lot. Um, it's going to be hard to know without us playing the, the uh, set out a lot exactly how reliable Plunder is. I think it's going to be moderately reliable, but I think this can be really rough to use. Next up, we have Scrap Shot, which is a fast speed deal 7, toss 3. Now, it's deal 7 to a unit. So it is bad Vengeance that tosses 3. All right, well, Venice is a great card. Venice is a 6 or a 7. Uh, it's a, probably it's a 7 or an 8. Um, but Scrap Shot is bad Vengeance. If they have more than 7 health, you don't kill it. If they have Barrier, you don't kill it. It is bad Vengeance. It is maybe like a 4. It's maybe a 3. Um, it is... I think I'm going to keep it as, as a... I'm going to keep it as a 4, because removal in and of itself is useful. Um, it is... It is Right, it's funny, because because Strong Arm, right, is harder to use, but has way more upside. Scrap Shot is easier to use, but um, is arguably beatable in more ways than Strong Arm is. Um, so I think it's it's fair to kind of call them, like, they're both big unit removal. This one's more, this one is in some ways more usable, and also in some ways less usable, but also has less upside. As far as toss energy is concerned, it's kind of nice. Um, if you need to toss three more by the end of the game, sure. Maybe give it like a six. Um, I, I don't want to put that much power on toss three. It's certainly nice. Don't get me wrong. Uh, what's also really good is it's, it, it's curiously right alongside shipwreck hoarder, uh, which is right. Toss two and put treasure in the deck. Tossing in the late game, by the way, is really valuable to find your treasures. Uh, so that is, uh, quite useful. I still don't want to go higher than a six. Uh... uh 
It's vengeance that only misses sometimes. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's fine to go like here. It's in most cases it's vengeance, I guess, right? I think in most cases it's vengeance. So I think it's okay to be a five. It would be okay to include this. Um overall six, sure. Alright. We now go into Mind Meld. We get ourselves the last three epics of Bilgewater. Mind Meld. This round set all allies' power and health to the number of spells you've played this game. This is active as soon as round five, if you bank spell mana. Which, by the way, we are seeing a lot of spam one drops get a ton of units on the board, spam a ton of cheap spells as fast as possible. You're you're playing essentially discard aggro, but not. You're playing play your cards aggro. And you're trying to play as many units as spells. You're trying to play spells that summon units. Um, you're jamming as many of them as possible. I could realistically see like Vile Feast being played in this deck. And then you go to round eight and you say, okay, I'm going to mind meld. All my crappy two threes are eight eights. Swing. And by the way, if they have Scout, that's fine. They're 8-8s with Scout. If they have Overwhelm, that's fine. They keep all their keywords, right? You're not transforming them into a random bullcrap. That's just an 8-8 blank. They keep all their keywords, which are often very good. Keep in mind, this can buff your Fizz into an 8-8. This can buff your Quinn into an 8-8. Um, or whatever, right? Um, realistically, by round... If you're playing this... Let's say you're going to play this on round 7. Okay, you're going to end the game around 7. That means you have seen 11 cards, and this is your... Uh, this is You've seen 11 cards, right? So you have 5 units and 5 spells played. You have 5 five fives, assuming nothing ever died. If I'm not trolling and I'm doing the math right. Right. 7 plus 4 is 11, yeah. Now, that said, again, that would be bad... If the deck wasn't, I play one spell and summon two units, right? Now, I have played, you know, six spells and have six units instead of five spells and five units. Now it's six six sixes. That's way better than five five fives, right? So I can see Mind Meld actually being pretty good. Now, is it a good card in most decks? No, I think it's actually a one in most decks. Um, can it be a good finisher in one drop? Slam, slam a jamma. Absolutely, it can be. It can absolutely be a, a great card in one drop slam a jamma. Um, Twisted Fate again is someone who has a stat line, right? He has he has quick attack. Um, is mind meld? Yeah, I think it's 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 overall this, right? I think it's I think it actually can be a quite good card. Um, next up, we get Riptide Rex. Riptide Rex cannon barrages seven times on random enemies. Cannon barrage is. A skill, it is not a card you main deck, it is what happens with, with uh, Riptide Rex. It deals two to a unit, but if it's dead or gone, deal one to the Nexus instead. So I believe it stacks up all seven, and then if it, you know... Um, also, it's random enemies, right? So it, it only targets units, right? So it deals 14 random damage to the enemy board. Um, also, want to point out how it would work with Powder Kegs. The first one, Powder Kegs. Powder Kegs all explode, the rest just do two damage. Um, so it is an 8 mana 7-4 that clears the board in most cases. I, I believe, I am not certain, but I believe it can stack itself up in an unintelligent way. I believe it can stack itself up unintelligently and, you know, throw 7 things at the 2-1 and just end up hitting Nexus and not killing the 4-4 four, four next to it. Um, but is an 8 mana 7-4 usually clear the board? Good? Yes. This will probably clear most things, right? It is it is deal 14 damage. Some of it's going to miss. Uh, but odds are it'll hit a lot of things. And whatever it doesn't kill, it probably blocks because 7 attack is a lot. It probably it probably kills 3 things and blocks a 4th. It also probably makes way for you to get your attacks in. Um, I want to point out that um, Misfortune's ship that we talked about earlier, the Siren. Um, your spells and skills deal 1 extra damage while it's attacking. Um, so Riptide Rex cannot reliably do this. Um... Like, it can't do it with a Siren. Also, Riptide Rex requires you to plunder. Um, and that is a problem in and of itself. Which means if you're not Plunder Synergy, this is a bad card. Uh, we'll go back down to it being a 4. Because you're going to plunder sometimes. You're going to get some value. It's going to be okay. Um, if you're Plunder Synergy, this is probably more like a 7. Um, it's overall an okay card. But this is a way to clear the board for Plunder Synergy. To maybe make the way for you to end the game in some way. And again, 
Um, looking at the text again, if deal two to a unit. Okay, so actually, here's one thing I'm not certain about, actually. Um, oh, no, no, it's deal one to the Nexus instead, right? So it's it's not if it kills it, deal one to the Nexus, like double up or, or parlay. It's if this is going to hit the unit, hit the Nexus instead. So you, you, you can't completely brick this effect. It will, at worst, do seven to the Nexus, which is pretty good. Um, any ways you have of buffing spell power or skill power is good. Um, so again, there's more Piltover's on synergy of running Funsmith. I can really see Funsmith being a card in this kind of deck. Um, but I think that's, that's, the, that's the, the power level. And then we go to Dreadway. Dreadway is Gangplank Ship. It is a 9-mana 4-8 Fearsome Draw card. All right. And so a 9-mana 4-8 Fearsome Draw card is pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's not a 23. It's a, it's a 2 or a 3. Um, but double all damage dealt by allies. Now, I believe this does not count skills. I am not certain of that, but I believe so. Um, I don't believe skills and spells are allies. Much like how Ezreal's spell, sorry, Ezreal's level up works with lifesteal because he deals damage to the Nexus, um, something like Anivia uh, or Vladimir creates a skill token and that token deals damage. So I don't believe it affects things like Anivia and Vladimir and Misfortune. I could be wrong about that, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, my, my instinct is, based on how we've seen allies work before, allies always refer to allied units. Um, I could see it affecting the skills. This is the first time this happens. If it does, and to be clear, right, that this is getting played with Gangplank, and Gangplank is the deck all about, you know, putting Powder Kegs down and then blowing those up with, uh, with spells and skills. So, like, based on its placement within the set, um, it, it should, but I just don't know. And I'm sure, like, there's an obvious answer here that I'm, that I'm missing, but I just, I just don't think we're there. Um, okay, so if, if it doesn't affect spells and skills, this is a pretty bad card, it's, it's, you know, it's a bad stat line, it draws a card, it makes Gangplank a 10-5, which makes this decent, it makes it, I mean, it in and of itself is literally always an 8-8, right? Uh, just by existing, it literally must be an 8-8. Um, so it's, it's an 8-8 fearsome draw a card with an upside. Okay, that's a 6 at least, right? Um, it's, it's 8-8 fearsome draw a card, which is at least a 6. Um, so automatically good. Um, if it does work with skills, this is, this is maybe a 10. Um... I'm going to go with 9 because it's so expensive. I, I want really important things out of a 9 drop. Uh, but I think definitely a good card. Um, if it doesn't work with skills, it's probably still at least a 7. Um, because you're going to make your Overwhelms do a ton of damage. Such one is going to be massive, stuff like that. It, it can work out. All right, now we go into Demacia. We've covered most of the cards. We have a few. So we have Ranger's Resolve. Give allies tough this round. Now this is synergy with... Um, I don't think you're going to play it because I think Piltover and Zon is too good because of Professor Von Yip. Um, but if you're doing, you know, uh, Horde mode, right? If you're, if, you're, if you're jamming a million cards on the board, you can give them all tough, um, which can be nice. This is obviously the same cost as Chain Vest, a similar effect to Chain Vest, but instead of being on one unit forever, it is on your entire board for one round. Um, this obviously hard beats things like Vile Feast. It beats things like Anivia or Funsmith or a Twisted Fate Red card. Or, um, right, this, this is a really good way to combat Misfortune, which... Hits everything for one damage several times. Well, all my stuff is tough, so it's zero damage several times. Um, that can be really valuable. Um, this is obviously good against a lot of the MF stuff. It's good against the Nivea, um, but it still costs you a card. Uh, I think this is situational. Um, I think it's fine, but it's situational. Um, yeah, I think it's probably okay in, in sort of Demacia Zoo. Like, if we took the current Bannerman deck and threw this card in, I think I'd play this card. I think it's, I think it's a good way to say, hey, look, I went wide, I went for a big attack... And, you know, I, I I think it's there. I think it's just, I think it's just barely there. It's like an okay card. Um, that's, that's what I believe. We then get Concerted Strike. Demacia gets some more target removal. So they had to tame, which cost five, and it just outright got rid of a card as long as you had a unit. This is now choose an enemy to allies strike it. So now we have out of more out of combat strike effects, right? We have ways to make um, uh, 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 Garen strike. We have ways to make Draven strike. 
Um, we don't get Nexus Strike here, right? This is not going to work with Overwhelm, but um, there's going to be some good stuff here, right? This, this is good. This is decent removal. Um, it is fast speed. It's going to probably remove one card at least, or it's going to remove that card in most cases. Uh, what's cool is you can't completely beat it with barrier uh, because it's going to hit with one that hit with the other. It is not single combat to get hit back. Um, so as long as you have a board, it is good removal. This is this is solid. I think I think um, most decks have units, and this is this is removal for five, which is which is solid. Yes, they can react to this by trying to get rid of your dudes, but uh, generally pretty good. Um, if there's strike synergy, maybe an eight. So I, I like it quite a bit. Um, Next, we get Genevieve Elmhart. So she is a six mana, four, four, scout, challenger, and when I'm summoned, give other allies plus one, plus one this round. Okay, so if you have, let's say, two other scouts, she's a six mana, six, six, um, with scout and challenger, which is very good, because in general, I would say four, four is enough that with challenger, you could probably remove two things. Um, so, you know, at worst, you are basically... You know, a powered up Static Shock, which is not terrible, um, but you are buffing your board so that this is this is kind of a finisher, right? It's it's kind of Scythria. It is um, kind of uh, what's it called, Windfair Hatchling, right? The four to elusive buff my whole board. It's obviously less of a buff, uh, but I think because it's Scout Challenger, you can get a lot of good stuff done. You can you can buff Quinn to being a four or five, um, or I guess you know level two Quinn would be uh, yeah a, a five six, right? Uh, level two Quinn's a five six. This comes down right afterwards. It's right. She's she's challenger and everything else. So um, yeah, this can this can really work out. Uh, would I slam it to a random deck? Eh, it's probably a little. It's it's okay. I think. I think it's okay in a random deck. I think you know striking twice for four is pretty good. A six mana eight four is a, is an six, 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 six mana eight four challenger is pretty good. Uh, so I think it's fine. Um, I think you run this in. Um, a scout deck, I think it's it's pretty good. If you can go wide, it's a pretty good top end. Uh, so yeah, I think it's an okay card. Uh, yeah, I think we're here. Uh, and then we have... Oops, sorry. I wasn't scrolling down. My apologies. I meant to and I forgot. Okay, let's... Here we go. There's there's the scores. Um, here, here's the scores that I had. Yeah, 4, 6, 5, 7, 8, 7, 5, 7, 6. My, my bad. I'm sorry about that. All right. We move on to the last card of Demacia, which is Unyielding Spirit. Grant an ally. I can't take damage or die. Now, it does not block Obliterate, so it will not get rid of Bale Sight. It will not get rid of um, other stuff, but it lets an ally tank a bunch of damage. This allows you to beat Vengeance and then also attack with it afterwards. I find this spell to be very, very expensive. Um, so what's nice about it, though, is it, it breaks a lot of things, right? So Thermogenic Beam loses a barrier. Uh, but then your unit is now still on the field and might need to to play around a little bit more. If you go here, it it beats everything, right? It beats every combat trick in the game. It it beats life steal. Um, in general, it is a burst spell that says, I mean, almost in some cases, replace whatever card you just had. Um, eight, eight mana replace a card is not great. Right? Like, if, like, recall is practically this, right? Like, if Unyielding Spirit was going to target a 7 drop, um, and you just recall the 7 drop and then replay the 7 drop, you've basically done what Unyielding Spirit did in many cases, right? In many cases, it was just simply that. Um, the upside, though, is it works like in combat, where your 8 8 fights their 8 8, and instead of recalling it and replaying it, you just beat their 8 8 and stayed alive. That's obviously quite good. Um, What's also nice is it's a combat trick that doesn't really lose to other combat tricks. You can't, like, play this and then get vengeance and say, Haha, I got you. You played back-to-back. -back. Um, this only really loses to recall or stun. Um, we did get some more opponent recall in uh, this set. We did not get more... Uh, sorry, we got more opponent stun in this deck. We didn't get more opponent recall. Um, so, at least the unit will stay on board. If it's something you really, really, really value. And ultimately, the, the value of this card is, right, it obviously keeps the scout alive through two combats right? Which is very good. So you can Unyielding Spirit, you know, level two Quinn. And that means Quinn gets to go twice for four, summon a Valor each time. Um, that's good. Uh, anyone else who has really positive attack synergies that you really care about, that's good. Um, but it, it is your, it is a sort of quasi late game insurance where it keeps the unit alive. But at the same time, like, I don't really like the placement of this. So I think it's a four in generic play. Even in ideal cases, I'm, I'm not sure that you get a card that is so good 
that you spend eight to keep it alive through this one round. When this could be any other eight drop, right? Because keep in mind, like, instead of Unyielding Spirit, you could just play Trindamir or, you know, Misfortune's Ship or, you know, whatever, right? Like, this could be a different eight mana card, and eight mana cards must be very, very good. Um, and in a lot of cases, I would just rather play some other card. But it b because that other eight mana card does a thing always, this is only really good if the situation permits. Um... So I think it's bad generically. Uh, but look, if you do find some things that are cool, if, if you know, there really is something that's worth protecting because you made it really awesome and it's and it's really boss um, and you get to beat Vengeance and then also go through minion combat, then yeah, I think it can be, it's an optimistic seven. It's maybe even an optimistic eight because it can be a real blowout. Um, I think it's an optimistic eight. Um I think next time we do a set review, I'm going to go pessimistic, optimistic, um, average. Uh, and that's kind of how I'm going to do it in the future. But um, I think we're, we're going to finish this out, obviously. So uh, we're going to make sure we keep scrolling the right amount. Um, cool. We, we, we scrolled a bunch to make sure we don't we don't screw it up. All right. So into Freljord we go, right? We now know all the Demacian cards. We go into Freljord. All right. And we have Caught in the Cold, two mana slow spell. Give an enemy unit Frostbite and Vulnerable this round. Okay, so two mana, use your unit to remove, right? So this is this is um, single combat, kind of. It's single combat, you don't take any damage back, but it uses your attack to do it, which means it's going to only work when you have an attack token, which means it's very, very slow, right? Which means you have to have had... Um, it needs to be your attack. You need to have a unit good enough to use... To kill the thing, or at least, you know, gum it up for whatever reason you want. Um, and it can't be a combat trick. So in a lot of ways, this card is bad, right? Uh, it's obviously, it's it's good Rhyme Fang Wolf synergy, but like, if I have Rhyme Fang Wolf, I'm just going to play, you know, my burst speed freeze spells. This this allows other units to get, to get Challenger, right? This this allows you to say, okay, you have, uh, you have Karma, um, I'm going to Cotton the Cold you, and then go for it. So this allows, right, this is basically how, um, I mean, this is this is Freljord's version of Mystic Shot, Black Spear, Get Excited, Single Combat. It's it's Freljord's removal, because Freljord doesn't really have removal, right? So in the context of Freljord needs removal, this is a very good card. Um, it also allows you to, you know, use an overall unit to hit face, right? This allows you to, um, you know, Frostbite Vulnerable something if Sejuani was already in play, um, or, you know, the, the effect's no longer, you know, getting used, and now Sejuani gets to go again to overwhelm this thing. Um, it allows you to, you know, let Trindamir just, like, whack something go face. Um, giving something vulnerable is a nice effect. Uh, I still feel like it's very, very, very slow. It's only one round, so it's only on the turn you're going to attack. It's not a combat trick. Uh, combo potential is decent, but I think it's overall a fairly weak card. Next up is Shared Spoils, three meta spell. Uh, we're going to scroll here. Um, grant the top three units in your deck plus one, plus one. Is that a good card? Well, it is a spread out version of Take Heart or Stand Alone. Um, you could easily just jam this on turn two and wait and see what happens. Um, if you plunder, though, it is draw a card. And it's draw one of them, right? So it's not even draw a card. It is guaranteed draw a card of plus one, plus one, which is really, really nice. So uh, again, there's some Yeti synergy here because if you can get a Yeti into the top of your deck, this is going to guarantee be hit by shared spoils. Your odds are at least one in three um, and actually better than that. Uh, well, no, it, your odds, um, yeah, your odds are one in three that it draws you the Yeti. Um, and then you have a one mana six, six ready to go very early on. Um, and even if you miss on the Yeti, you've now increased your chance of drawing the Yeti even more, uh, by the next round, right? Your odds are, your, your odds are two and three of, of, uh, are two thirds of drawing the Yeti next round. Uh, at least next time you draw a unit, if, you're, if your deck is, is minion-heavy. So, okay, Freljord has more Plunder Synergy, right? Because we already had Sejuani, who was Plunder Synergy. Um, that could keep going, obviously. Um, so, it is a 2-mana replace me. Okay, so so if you're not getting Plunder, right, it's, it's okay-ish. It's probably a 3 or a 2. It costs you a card, but it gives you some value down the line. I mean, this is basically bad Omen Hawk, right? Like, Omen Hawk is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one that buffs 2 units. This is a two mana, nothing, that buffs one more. That's obviously pretty bad. 
Um, that said, obviously, so yeah, it's bad if you don't plunder. If you plunder, it's replace me. Um, the unit you have is permanently plus one, plus one, which is not terrible. It's maybe worth one mana to do that. Uh, and then the two other things you draw are good. So this is actually very good in a plunder deck. Um, I think it's overall a five, um, because I think you can, in some ways, like make this happen down the line. Um, I guess, we, I guess, yeah, plunder is going to happen. Some, so we'll make it, we'll make it a three on average because, um, it's going to happen sometimes. Alrighty. We scroll down to cards we haven't seen yet, and we get Aurora Porealis. Seven mana burst. Create two random Poros from any region and two Poro snacks. Now, I am not certain. I am not certain. It doesn't say in hand, right? It doesn't say in hand, but I've never seen, but I feel like if it was going in play, it would say summon two random Poros from any region and play two Poros, right? Like I would almost expect there to be different wording here. So I, I am not sure which one this is. I actually just don't know. Um, if it makes them in hand, it's seven mana draw four, right? I, I think it's in hand. The more I think about this card, I think the more I think it's in hand. It's seven mana draw four, right? So it is it is a cheaper version of um it's cheaper and more draws than uh what's it called? I'm blanking on the name of it, but it'll get there eventually. Progress day, right? It is cheap progress, it it is it is more cards, arguably cheaper in some ways, progress day. Um now, it's going to be really hard to play Porealis and then also the Poro Snacks, but it is Burst Speed. So if you have 13 mana, you can Porealis, Poro Snacks, Poro Snacks all, at, all on the same round at 13. Uh, it gives you two random Poros. It can give you Lonely Poro. It can give you um, the 3-3 three, three Overwhelm. Um, this is definitely good, right? I think this is a good card. Um, now, would you play it in a random deck that doesn't want it? No. Um, it's it's seven mana. Create two one ones in hand. This is pretty bad overall. Um is the is the spam one drops deck gonna run poros? Probably not. The, the, I think I think the one drop deck is probably not a poro deck. Um, at least I don't think it is. Maybe it is, but I think it's not. Um, but regardless, what else we got going on here in a poro deck? It's I mean it's it's a lot of power, right? It it helps you refill the board. It buffs the board you have. Um, if you're playing a Pacific Poro deck, I think this is a card you definitely include probably two of. I think two is appropriate. You have a lot of card draw in Poro decks in general because of Poro Herder. Um, and you're in Frailure automatically, which also has card draw. So I think you don't need to go too deep in your deck to find it. I would run maybe at most two of these. And I think it's solid. We go into Ionia. We get to Eye of the Dragon. It is a two mana one three with a two. And so it's kind of a one mana two three. Um, or sorry, a one mana one three. Okay. Uh, now, if you're able to cast two spells, then on the next round start, you summon a dragonling. And a dragonling is a two one ephemeral lifesteal. That's pretty good, right? It is a way to heal back up. It is a way to block or at least deal some damage. Um, and it's going to be at least a little bit annoying. Um, so if you are playing a spell jamming deck, um, right, you play this on two, you then play two spells on three, you then get your Dragonling on four. It takes a while to get there, to be clear, right? Because you're probably not playing two spells and also jamming this card down on two or something. You're doing this much later on in the game. But it does, on round start, create some chump blocked with lifesteal to stall the game out. If you're going to play, you know, a lot of card draw, a lot of spell jamming. Now, this does not, this does not really fit the, like... I don't think it super fits the 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 one drop spam like let's go you know throw a bunch of cards down um, let's just draw a million cards and jam them and and you know hopefully their spells and you know we top out with that epic that makes everything like you know six six because we played a bunch of spells I don't think it fits that deck this is much more of a slow tempo card right this is we're gonna wait and level up Lee Sin we're gonna wait and level up TF we're gonna wait and and play a more controlled game plan and so we're gonna constantly play two cards like. Retreat, Return, and Sonic Wave Resident Strike, which just costs three mana, and we get a free 2-1 out of it. 
Um, and we get some free lifesteal out of it. We get some free damage out of it. That's not too bad. Um, so I think it fits that that deck type um, and is pretty good there. So in an average deck, it is sometimes a 3-3. It takes a while to get there, but that's actually okay. Um, I would not run this in most decks. I think having to play two spells in the same round um, can be hard to do for most decks, but I think the upside's decent. Um, in a more controlly deck, yeah, I, I, I'm going to keep going with the 7 where it's like, yeah, this is pretty solid. Um, overall, I think it's a fairly weak card, but uh, actually we're going to go... The fact that it's a tune, right, makes it really cheap. I want to point that out, right? That that it self synergizes because it's a it's a one three that you know only really costs you one real mana. Um, because of that, um, if you played the one mana a tune and you play this card, you can play two one mana spells on the same turn, um, and then you'll get your dragonling on three. That'll help a little bit. Um, still, that requires synergy, so we're gonna keep it at seven. We go down to Deep Meditation. Deep Meditation is an Ionian Burst Speed spell that costs two less if you played two spells last round. So, it is four mana draw two, or two mana draw two, and specifically draw spells. So we are back in a, I would say, fairly control focus because we are spending mana on card generation, not on tempo. So this is automatically more of a control card than an aggro card. Um, it can find you some finishers, but um, but if you cast at least two spells last round, it only costs two, uh, which means you can kind of wait to go off on this. Um, it also means that, by the way, this card will not draw other deep meditations because it draws two other spells. You cannot chain them together. Um, so you cannot have a deck where you're running three deep meditations and you like counterfeit copies them and you do weird shenanigans with like Cloud Drinker or whatever. Like I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, I mean it literally can't, because of course. Uh, but this will this will jam cards into your hand. Um and it's it's often two mana draw to. Yes, your opponent knows their spells, but that's fine. Um I like this. Now, in a non-spell heavy deck, I think you can still find the room to do it, right? I think this is probably still good. I think it's still good even in non-spell heavy, and it's very good in spell heavy. Um Yeah, I think it's just a good card overall. Next, we go to Horns of the Dragon. Oh, one of the very, very few other double attack units in the game. It's a 6 mana 4 6, aka kind of a 6 mana 8 6. Um, I think you really, really want to get this guy overwhelmed somehow. Um, as a vanilla body, it's actually decent, right? This is above average by far. An 8 6 for a 6 is good. It is, it is above market rate. Um, I don't quite want to go for 7 because I don't think it's quite there. Uh, just because 6 is getting a little bit late in the game and you want some, you know, you want things like Hecarim on 6, right? Hecarim is better than this card, right? Even level 1 Hecarim, if could never level up, is better than this card. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is pretty solid. If you can get this guy overwhelmed, if you can get this guy elusive, if you can give this guy, you know, ways of dealing bonus damage, this thing can really, really take over. Um, you know, if you have ways of, you know, getting challenger, overwhelm, vulnerable, whatever, um, there's some cool stuff there. Um, I have not really figured out the right ways of using double attack. Um, it's it's a little awkward in that, like, well, I kill something small and my second attack doesn't do anything because I quick struck it, or I hit something big and I lose my unit and it was just an 8-6. Um, I guess it is, it's it's the flexibility, right? It's that it eats small things for breakfast, but it can also trade up or hit face for a lot. I guess that's really where it goes. Um, I think it's a solid card overall. I think you can just, like, play this and then buff it sometimes. Uh, I think it's pretty decent. All right, now we go down to Noxus. We already did Ravenous Flock and Demolitionist. Uh, so we go to Death's Hand. Death's Hand, deal two to an enemy unit and one to their Nexus. Okay, so this is Parlay without the if statement, right? It's also Mystic Shot with one to face at the very end of it. So it's expensive Mystic Shot that triggers Parlay and Nexus damage effects. Okay. Yeah, um, I'm going to go a, a seven, honestly. Uh, I mean, Mystic Shot's an 8 or a 9, right? So being slightly worse Mystic Shot is totally fine. Um, this is this is a very good card, I think. Um, again, it gives you Plunder effects. It's reasonably cheap, so you can probably reliably get something good out of it afterwards. Um, yeah, I think I'm just kind of a fan of this. I think it's a good card. It's a very good card. I could easily see running 3 of it in almost every deck. Um, I think it's an auto-include in anything that's Plunder-focused, in anything that's hit next focused um, this, again, has Powder Kick Synergy. Uh, yeah, love the card. Next up, Noxus gets a 3-mana 4-3 Overwhelm. Very good card. Very, very good aggressive card. Um, 
Basically, if, if you're playing aggro Noxus, you want this card. You're main decking this every single time. This is very, very likely to trigger plunder effects. Um, there is a real chance that... Um, actually, the more I think about it, I think I think the like steal cards from your opponent's deck archetype is probably still mostly mono pilt or sorry mono uh, bilgewater. But yeah, uh, this is gonna be this is gonna be pretty solid. This is a good card. Uh, it's very good on aggro. It's gonna give you some some um, uh, over the top uh, plunder synergy, and uh, it will also. Um, it's also good with vulnerable because you're gonna find some random like two two to kill and get damage over the face and still remove like like cards like this efficient overwhelm cards are amazing with vulnerable absolutely amazing with vulnerable Sejuani would love to just just neuter something so that iron ballista can kill it it's it's it's, it's like favorite synergy so this is this is very good um, Noxian fervor I believe we already had. Uh, City Breaker already had, Swain already had, Armored Tusk Rider. Armored Tusk Rider is a 6 mana, 6 5 overwhelm. I'll give that a 5. That's fine. Um, but it also only takes damage from enemy units with 5 or more power. So if you don't one shot it, you don't even deal damage to this thing. Because that's at least a 6. Um, I don't want to go that much higher because it is still a slightly understated 6 drop. Um, but wow. This is more absurdly good vulnerable synergy. Absurdly good vulnerable synergy. Where um, you can vulnerable something with four attack and this thing just eats it for breakfast. This is amazing. Absolutely amazing. Amazing card. Um, I'm going to give this another eight as well. Uh, ah, here's the weird thing. Because it costs six, even though it's super cool, I have a hard time making this an, an eight out of ten. Um... Because part of me just doesn't want to believe that relatively vanilla units can be highly rated. Um, I think I'm going to force myself to say 7. Um, because all it is is an efficient unit. Um, and, and it's not like They Who Endure, which is a 6 mana 12 12. Like, it's a 6 mana 6 5 that sometimes the 6 mana 6 12. And that's great, right? That's still very, very good. But. It's still just a unit. So I'm going to stick with there. Actually, one other thing. It's a great blocker. We're going to go, we're going to, go to 7 here. Um, because it's a blocker, right? You can block any 4 attack unit and just win here. Yes, they can use a combat trick. Sure, there's other things going on. But like this is actually an absurdly good blocker as well. For, for a lot of situations. So I like that a lot. Um, whoop. There we go. It's a, it's it's a seven eight eight. There we go. Right there. We, we scrolled down. My apologies. I keep doing this wrong. I'm I'm a bad person. All right. We go to the last car that we haven't seen in Noxus yet, which is Auroch Glinthorn. Say six mana, six six. When I attack, stun all damaged enemies, and there's no associated card. Which means it theoretically is instant speed, much like with Ash, where she frostbites the second the attack is declared. There is no cog on the on the timeline, which means this cannot synergize with misfortune, right? You cannot sequence this with MF and have MF like damage all the blocking units and then stun them, and now they've been knocked off the off the front row. This just instantly stuns damaged enemies. Um, which means that if you want to lead with something like make it rain and ping a bunch of stuff or um, any other interesting way of doing this, um, then this is essentially level 2 Ash in that, well, your guys are stunned, they cannot block. This is a great finisher. This is a 6-6 this is a six -six that is going to remove... An, by nature of this card, it's going to remove the big things from the opponent's um, side of the board, right? It's going to remove the Trinibir that took one damage and is now no longer able to do anything. It's not going to stop the 1-1, one -one, but who cares? It's a 1-1. One -one. Let it let it block and die. Who You know, who cares? Um, but also, if you are running things like Avalanche, um, Avalanche kills the bad things, damages the big ones, they get stunned, let's go. Um, this is a great card. This is probably a 7 as a, as a vanilla. Um... It's going to stun one or two things at a time if you're playing it with Yasuo. And by the way, it's in Noxus, which is Yasuo's primary um, sister faction. Um, great. Yep. It's probably going to work there as well. Uh, we're we're going to get some more Yasuo XP. We're going to level up Yasuo before the fight even starts. Cool stuff. Um, but again, 
point out, this does not seem to work with combat tricks. This is just simply a way to remove blockers from a pending attack. But I think there are going to be plenty of ways to find ways to ping your opponent's units down. Like, I mean, I could really see a round where it's like, yeah, it's round eight. I open Withering Whale, and then I attack with Auric Glinthorn. We're good. I think, it's, I think it's strong. In combo, it's an eight. Let's keep it a seven. The, the extra combo synergy is not that high. It's mostly a vanilla. It has a couple of, you know, extra synergies, but it's mostly just a good card. Um, maybe I'm overrating how often things are stunned. Maybe it should be a six. No, I'm going to keep seven. All right, we go to the last, I guess, faction now. Um, and we get Trail of Evidence. We get a two-mana burst spell that creates a random two-cost card in hand but costs zero this round. So you are playing a card for the privilege of playing two cards. So automatically, whatever this creates is weaker than what you could have chosen to make. Now, again, it is a random two-cost card, not from any region, so it is a two-cost card from what you are playing. So, theoretically, there might be decks where you actually really, really, really want, um, you know, you're playing Mono Piltover, and you really like Piltover's two drops because you really like Mystic Shots, and you really wish you could have five. It's like, well, we're going to play Trail of Evidence, and it's another one. Um, it, it The card costing zero, I believe, does not trigger the... Um, two cost synergy archetype. It needs to cost two when you play it. I believe that's true. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Um, but it does allow you to play two cards. So if you have anything that wants you to play multiple cards, um, then great. Now it's not a draw effect. It is a create effect. Um, also, I want to point out, this says create a random two cost card in hand or Porealis created those cards. It didn't say in hand. So if it does, if Porealis just generates two Poros and buffs them instantly... Um, that is a, that is a much better card, right? To, to be clear about that. But I, it, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe I really should have believed that it was in play. I, I don't know. Whatever. We're going to move on. Um, so, I mean, this, this is generally a bad card, though, right? You are choosing to play a card that just downgrades from whatever you could have chosen it to be. Um, and it downgrades it and says, hey, hope you can play it this round, otherwise you're wasting mana. Right? So this is an objectively very bad card. This is objectively a bad card if you don't have synergy for it. If you have synergy, uh, I don't know, man. Like, maybe there's something there. Maybe there is something that can be done. Maybe it's okay. Um, create a random two-cost card in hand. It costs zero this round. Yeah, it lets you play a second card this round. Now, it is a spell. It does have some spell synergy. I still don't see us playing this card. Now, here is a sick card. All right, this card is sick. I am a huge fan of Suit Up. Suit Up is a four mana burst spell that sets an ally to four four. But if when I am drawn, I cost two less on this round. So it is kind of a two mana set an ally to four four. Now I absolutely love this with things like Fizz, right? You can play Fizz on turn one. If you get lucky, you draw this on turn two. Fizz is now a four four, elusive who dodges spells and oh my. Um, this is, this is a card I think you definitely want to try to play with Fizz if possible. Um, this is another card that, uh, it's P and Z, right? This is one drop synergy. Um, it is also, to be fair, it is two cost card synergy. Um, it, it, it can, um, yeah, I mean, there, there's, there's some decent stuff here. I think this card is very, very good. It is only set an ally, right? You cannot nerf an opponent down to something small, but you can, you can make some of your champions bigger. Yes, it costs you a card to do so, um... Okay, what is the what is the realistic um, stat gain here? It's probably plus two, plus two, or plus two, plus three. Uh, now, remember earlier we had our um, set of cards, right? We had the um, earlier uh, Bilgewater card that was um, a three mana, get something two one, or it only costs two if it's like if you played a bunch of cards last round, or if you, it's your if you drew it this round or something like that. Um, this is uh, to be fair on a slightly narrow upside. Uh, to cost two less this round instead of costing one less. Uh, well, yeah, whatever, right? It is it is a bit narrower because it can't go on big things. Um, and it... it uh, See, here's the weird thing, right? It's like, it's not... Even in, in the best cases, it's not that much better than give an ally plus two, plus one. Um, because it's probably going on a, on a, on a one drop and it's giving it plus two, plus three. 
But that's just that's so much more valuable. Like this can give you a turn two four four. That just is very good. Um, this actually further beats things like Frostbite. This helps ensure that it gets out of range of of um, scary damage spells that you know you can like Fiora can be damaged and then you can bring her back up to four health before she levels up like there's just I think there's just more usability here because you go back to four health I think it's a really big deal um so I'm actually a fan of this um suit up I think is generally it's a it's still generally a four it's a small buff but I think on synergy it's a six or so I think it's an overall okay card um I know like I was saying a lot of positive things and I'm, I'm ending kind of low here but like ultimately it is still a very constrained buff card for most decks. In fact, for most decks, it's probably really bad. It's like a three or a two. For most decks, it's actually a pretty bad card. Um, let's stick with three. But there are going to be synergy decks where it's like, yeah, let's go buff my 1-1 one, one into something very, very powerful. Let's do it. I can like it there. Next up, we get the next big cat card. We get Subpersible. It is a 1-5 elusive for five. It is very bad. Um, that's like a pretty much instant one. This would need to be a probably a 4-5 to be uh, good. Uh, when I am summoned, draw one. Oh, okay, so it's it's a it's a it's a five mana one five draw card. Okay, so it's more like a two. Um, when I am summoned, draw one. Then, if you've played at least ten other cards with different names, make me a five five. Okay, so if you're playing Singleton, um, now again you would have had to play ten other cards with different names. I think this realistically uh, lines up pretty well with. Um, Uh, oh, and by the way, like I know I was talking about Professor Von Yip a while ago. I'm pretty sure Professor Von Yip is give my one attack allies, not one cost allies, plus one, plus zero. Oh. I could be wrong. I think that's true, though. Uh, regardless, like it's still going to fit the deck archetype. Um, there's just like both ways to buff things. Uh, but regardless, we go to Subpersonal. So this would be buffed by Professor Von Yip, for example, because it's a one attack ally. Um, but if you've played at least 10 other cards with different names. Okay, so if you're not drawing other cards, you must have... you. This must be coming down in rounds 6 or 7 um, to have drawn that many cards. Um, if you're doing mass card draw, uh, you can go down a little bit earlier, of course. And ultimately, 5-5 five, five elusive draw card is a very good card, right? 5-5 uh, five, five elusive draw card, if it happens, is actually the best card in the game, right? Um... It's just like strictly better than than um, Shadow Assassin. Uh, okay, fine. Shadow Assassin costs less, sure, and the tempo matters, so we'll go to a nine. But like five five elusive draw card is very good. Is very 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 good. Um, and yes, I'm really putting a seven point difference between what four power does for this card. Um, this outright wins the board against all possible. Are all reasonable elusives. Um, this honestly puts some tempo on your opponent as well because it's hard to remove. Uh, it hits face for five every turn as elusive or every other turn as elusive. Um, this is a good card. Um, how hard is it to get 10 cards out overall? Uh, well, not on curve, but like in any realistic game, you will eventually have this happen. I will probably not main deck Subpersible, but realistically... You know, if you draw this at all and you draw it on, like, round, I don't know, nine or something, you probably have the level up condition met. So, you know, I'm increasingly going to, hey, this card's actually decent. Um, getting it down on curve is better. Um, but, okay, the more I look at this card, the more I'm like, actually, this condition is not hard. Um, not really. Uh, now, the, the difficulty, and I want to be clear about this, is... Um, if you're building your deck really, really optimally and it's really, really tightly tuned, you're probably playing, like, 11 or 12 three ofs. And, and then, you know, let's call it, you know, three or four two ofs, right? Uh, which means you only ever have 15 different cards in your deck, which means you have to actually draw pretty high variance in order to get there. Um, so I think a really finely tuned, like, zoo deck or a control deck is probably not going to hit this very often. Uh, so we're going to keep it as a four, but especially in limited... I think Limit's going to hit this a lot. This is going to be an amazing card in Expeditions. Um, and I think there's going to be a decent number of, di of different decks that will actually run this card because of things that just, like, that have huge draw synergy or have card creation synergy. Subpersonal is going to get playable in that. Uh, and then finally, the very last card is Chief Mechanist Zevi. 
Um, six mana, five, six. Okay, a little bit weak, uh, but not horrible. When you draw a card, give it fleeting and create a copy of it. So your hand can never grow any larger, at least not long term, but you are now getting double of every card you ever play. Now, I don't I, I think this is actually almost always pure upside. I think it's pure upside. Um, in a lot of cases. So obviously you can draw like, oops, I drew an eight drop that I can't I can't use. Oh, we're screwed. But this is an amazing top end in a in a uh, card churn deck. Like, keep in mind now that this card existing means Twisted Fate levels up off of casting pick a card or whatever the card's actually called. Um, because you draw a card at start of round, which means you draw two. And then you draw three cards, which means you draw six. And Twisted Fate is instantly level two. Assuming your hand is empty enough for it to, for it to work. And now you're here with seven mana and eight uh, fleeting cards to play, which you just need to like eject from your hand as fast as possible. Um, this is again, this is this is a card where it's like you're gonna need to end the game pretty fast because you can no longer play with subtlety. Um, and the cards you draw, you can't play all of them. But like, hey, if you draw, you know, two the harrowings, it's like, well, that's too bad. I can't use them both. But like, I was gonna play the harrowing anyway, so who cares? Um, you know, obviously, if you, if you Rummage, Rummage is now draw two and then double those cards. So you've got, you know, four cards to play. Yes, you've got to play them all right now, but it makes cheap draw effects very, very good. Um, which is, which is I think, quite nice, quite good. I think this card um, ultimately ends up as still okay in an average deck. I still don't see myself throwing this into a main deck, but this is this is a game winner in a, in a card churn deck, and I think it's um, pretty good overall. All right, that is it. That is two hours of covering the last 50 so odd cards of the set. I am excited about the set launch. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, sadly, my internet has been hating my streaming, but I will try to stream if I can um, with set two coming out. I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Thank you so much for tuning into the video. Hope you made it the whole way through. If not, it's okay. And I'll see you next time. Uh, next video should be uh, the, the set one time capsule. So that'll, that'll come out uh, sometime this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.